Hi, I'm Doug Compton from 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. Not Mark, not Art, but Doug. Um, and uh, it's wonderful to be here at Amy West again. I've, I've been coming since uh, 2019, except in the 2020 when we, we couldn't make it, of course. Something called COVID. Um, I really, really enjoy coming here. I love the, the camaraderie of everybody and uh, the, just the warm feelings and the getting to know everyone and, and actually putting a face to a lot of these names that I know on social media, uh, people who follow my channel, which is 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast on YouTube. And I encourage all of you to, to sign up if you haven't signed up and watched my wonderful videos. But today, I want to talk about the Amiga Art Contest. Now, after I got back into the Amiga community in 2018, I made a decision to not do a channel on video games because that was pretty well saturated with the Amiga community. Lots of people were doing shows on video games. So I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to concentrate on the productivity and the creativity side of the Amiga, which obviously that's what was so important to so many of us back in the late 80s and early 90s. Only the Amiga made it possible. And what they meant by that was all of the, the, the combining of the audio and the video and the graphics and, and the creative aspect of the Amiga would allow you to do things that you just literally could not do with a normal computer system. So that's the direction I wanted to go with my website, or with my, uh, my YouTube channel, and that worked out great. Then about a year later, I started thinking, you know, I want to I wanna encourage other people into exploring more of what their Amigas could do. I would literally talk to people uh, online who never loaded workbench on their Amiga. They just said they, they never put their workbench disc in, never needed to. They put in Lemmings, they put in Pac-Man. No, no, that wasn't really on the Amiga. They'd put in Defender of the Crown and they'd just play games and just did not really realize just what the Amiga was capable of. So I thought, how am I going to present this to the world to encourage more people to use it as the creative machine it originally was? And I thought, you know, I've got this old Commodore magazine. I think it was from 88 or 89, Commodore branded magazine. And they had an art contest in there. And I was paging through it. And I'm like, people were submitting these beautiful images they made on their Amigas and their Commodore 64s in that magazine. And they, they submitted them and they presented them in the magazine. And the, the, the Commodore magazine gave out awards for who they thought was best. And I thought, what a fantastic idea. Let's, let's do that. But, but on an international scale, a worldwide scale. And there were a couple places, like there's still places who have demo competitions for the Amiga, and they're absolutely incredible. Demos knock your socks off. And there's a couple places that have uh, like Modfile and music competitions every year. Knock your socks off. I thought, but we need something where people can submit anything creative that they do, uh, hand-drawn artwork, animations, 3D artwork, that kind of thing. So in 2019, I got together with uh, Pixel Vixen, uh, Vicki Lambert, who's a good friend of mine, and uh, had her come on as a judge and a co-host, and we put the word out there for people to send in their artwork that they've created on the Amiga. Now, honestly, in 2019, I had no idea what kind of response we would get or if we would even get a response at all. You just don't know. We ended up getting dozens and dozens and dozens of submissions uh, the first year. And the only three categories we had was hand-drawn, uh, photo, and 3D, I believe. We had those three categories. And we'd get dozens of submissions. We did a live stream with it. And people loved it. They, they, just, they, would, they would come to the live stream and they'd say, wow, I can't believe this was done on an Amiga. I can't believe this artwork was done on an Amiga. So over the next couple of years, we had the contest grow more and more. Uh, we added in a uh, mod file category because the Amiga is so incredibly fantastic with creating music with Paula. And then we added an animation category uh, a year ago that's just taken off absolutely beautiful and it's just incredible what people can create with the Amiga so I want to share a little bit today about 
with some of the submissions with the 2022 art contest. Now the art contest is, is over. The, the, the ability to submit uh, went from June of 2022 to October 11th. So now we're going to get together. We're going to judge the, uh, the, the photos, the pictures, the animations and everything and uh, come up with the winners. And then Kevin Saunders and I, who is my um, compatriot this time, this year, uh, and co-host and judge, we're going to put on the actual official live stream and presentation probably the first or second week of November. We're still trying to narrow down the exact date and determine who this year's winners are. But I want to share a little bit with you guys about what was submitted this year because we got some absolutely knock your socks off submissions. Now, I have to apologize here. I mean, my, my, my background screen is lovely, Commodore 64, still ready, that's, that's perfectly appropriate. But you'll notice it's a Windows machine and a Windows 11 machine instead of an Amiga. And, and I'm so sorry and I'm, I'm humiliated and I hang my head in shame that I'm not presenting this on my Amiga. My intention was to do that. So I brought my Amiga 1200 here that, I, that I've been presenting on for a few years. And I had my good friend, uh, Chris, Mr. Toast, replace the keyboard connector inside. Uh, the keyboard connector was going bad. He did a fantastic job of that. It worked perfect. But somehow, when I was taking out my graphics interface, it's an InDivision MK2 uh, that allows me to display my graphics in such beautiful resolutions, I somehow killed it. I somehow destroyed my card and I went to put it in here about an hour ago and test everything out and my Amiga 1200 is not working now. <laughs> so I hang my head in shame in presenting this on a, on a meager Windows machine. But, you know, we make do in a pinch. So let me talk a little bit about the, the categories that we have. Uh, generally, the most popular category is the hand-drawn images category. And, uh, you know, we've all used um, deluxe paint. We've all used uh, photon paint, that kind of thing, in order to create images on our Amigas. And one particular gentleman who goes by the name Jojo076 has always done an absolutely incredible job of creating these beautiful, beautiful hand-drawn images. And let me just enlarge this so we can see what we're looking at here. Come on, you silly thing. One second. Oh, there, jeez. Sorry about that. I was doing this with my mouse earlier, and now... Look at that, look at that. So this is a, a 16 color image, I believe. Uh, what, what Jose does is he does all of these by hand, all of this artwork by hand. And he has a YouTube channel where he actually will walk you through step by step how he creates it. And he creates it live on YouTube. And, and just the fact that he can go from, you know, the, the bare outline of an image and all of a sudden you've got these reflections on the police officer's uh, uh, glasses and, and, and just these beautiful images and colors and, and the whole effect that he gets is, has just always knocked my socks off. Uh, he's submitted for, the, for most of the past several years and he is probably one of uh, the finest artists out there for, uh, for creating Amiga hand-drawn images. He just does an incredible job. Um, now, my good friend, Kevin Saunders, he's, of course, uh, the gentleman who's done the graphics for uh, several Amiga games, including uh, Reshoot R, and uh, he's worked with uh, Graham Cowie on a couple of games, handling some of the graphics with Graham's games. Um, and he's my co-host, of course, and he works almost exclusively in uh, brilliance on the Amiga. This is one of his images. Now, he can't win because he's one of the judges, but he's won several times in the past, and I think you can see why. He drew this by hand in brilliance, created it by hand in brilliance, and that's actually him somewhere there in the background um, in Jigsaw Puzzle Pieces. Just an incredible job that, uh, that Kevin does. All right. 
Now, I think maybe a few of us has, have heard of this gentleman before, Eric Schwartz. Now, Eric has been a pillar of the Amiga community since the late 80s. He did the graphics for Super Frog. I think most of us know who Amy the Squirrel is, which is a, uh, a comic that he did on the Amiga for years. And he's done some incredible 3D animations. Uh, I think for, was it for Amiga 30? He did a really, really incredible uh, animation of an, of, of an Amiga uh, singing at a, in a nightclub. Just absolutely fantastic. So Eric always submits some incredible stuff. But this year, he was feeling a bit cheeky. If you guys remember uh, the, the fiasco with, uh, I think, Seth Green, he created this NFT monkey and tried to sell uh, the NFT for a monkey he created. And everybody just kind of laughed at him and said, it's just a monkey. And they came out and they created the same basic monkey just in the craziest positions. So look it up in Google. You'll, you'll, it's really amusing. But so, so Eric came out and he created uh, NFT Amiga Monkey. And he told me he's selling it for $10,000 for the NFT of it. But he'd take five grand in a pinch if anyone wants to buy it. So <laughs> beautiful work from our pal Eric Schwartz. This one, Kitty Cooper. You guys don't get to see until the actual live stream of the uh, Amiga Art Contest in a couple of weeks. But that one is incredible. Everybody I've shown it to, it's knocked their socks off. Sorry, I can't show it to you. Uh, let's find our good friend Gordian here. He has done some incredible, incredible work. Again, this is all hand-drawn right on the Amiga. Look at the amount of detail that he puts into his images. It's just, just fantastic. I can't draw like this. I absolutely cannot draw like that. And I'm just so impressed that people are able to do that. Here's another one from him. Look at that. Look at that, the amount of detail that he puts into his images. And one pixel at a time. Uh, I, th I think he does this with a mouse. I don't know if he uses a graphic t graphics tablet on this one. A lot of my friends do use graphics tablets on there. But absolutely phenomenal. Now we're going to look at one more hand-drawn image here. And we're going to do that from Imre Sovigny. This was actually the first contribution to Amiga Art Contest 2022. And this was submitted back in November of last year. Um, I've put together a Facebook page. It's called Amiga Artwork. If anyone out there is on Facebook and they're not a member of my Amiga Artwork Facebook page, just look it up. Um, you can find it on my uh, links on my website. On, um, you can also uh, just go into Facebook and type in Amiga Artwork and you'll find me there. But we post a lot of, of beautiful things that we create on the Amiga all throughout the year. And uh, he put this up last year. And I took one look at this, and I put a message to him, and I said, man, you have got to submit that to the Amiga Art Contest. That is such a beautiful image. And again, hand-drawn. He, he used another image, an existing image, as a basis for it, and then basically copied that image and added the roses, added the spider. I think he may, yeah, he's even got the original image here. Let's take a look at that. Yeah. Boring, you know, uh, boring original image. And then he used his creativity to create that, which is much, much, much more exciting uh, with the, the, the way he, he framed it, with the, uh, the, the background images and the, the roses just mm, knocks my socks off. And I do not want to spoil all the hand-drawn stuff, but you can see we got quite a few submissions here in the hand-drawn category. Uh, yes, I do want to spoil it because these are absolutely incredible. Let me just find this one. Give me a second. <clears throat> so last year, um, a gentleman, uh, he goes by the handle Captain John Archer uh, on Amiga Bill's Twitter, uh, uh, Twitch stream. So some of you may know him. 
He has a son named Julian who last year uh, heard about the Amiga Art Contest and he said, hey dad, I want to try something. The kid was 12 years old. He says, I want to try it on the Amiga. So last year, he made a really cool image. And you guys have just got to see the first one so you can see it in context here. So this is uh, his image that he submitted last year. Uh, hand drawn. And then Julian. And that one. Okay. So again, 12 years old, just on a whim, says, hey, Dad, I want to enter something into the Amiga Art Contest. So it just tugged on my heartstrings when this young man just you know, took deluxe paint and took a mouse and, and created a cool image, image. But look what's happened in the one year since he first submitted that picture, which is really cool for a 12-year-old. Now he's 13, and we're going to go take a look at what he submitted now. Julian... Look how he's progressed now. Just incredible how he's gone from, you know, just basic little fun images to something that's really, really cool that I think a lot of people would have been proud of to be able to create at the age of 13 years old. So uh, my hat's off to Julian. He's just a fantastic young man. Now, another category that's really popular is the 3D category. And we've always got some, some cool submissions there. Um, my... Let's see, that was last year's winner. Let's take a look at this one. Here we go. This was done uh, all entirely on an Amiga. Um, I think it's actually pretty clever. It's kind of uh, kind of got the uh, a, a melty effect, like the uh, the name of that artist who's oh my goodness, his name is escaping my mind. Yeah, thank you. And more 3D artwork that's uh, rather appropriate. Let me find the right one. Yeah, you guys are getting some sneak peeks at some stuff here that I don't want you to see, but that's okay. There we go. Look at this one. Now, he created this years ago. He created this back in the 90s. Does, uh, does anyone recognize that spaceship? Does that remind you of any kind of special symbol? I think it's the, uh, what is it? isn't that the Atari logo? Yeah, I think that's the Atari logo. But <laughs> see, in the art contest, I don't mind at all if you submit something that you created decades ago. If you find a floppy with some old files that you created years ago, send it in. Absolutely love it. Now let's, uh, we won't spoil any more 3D ones. Let's move on to the next one, which is the animation category, which uh, this gentleman also submitted something in the animation category that he created years ago. Again, this is, this is 20 years ago that he created that in, uh, in Lightwave, and that is just the coolest thing, isn't it? Whee! <laughs> Our little Commodore ship. Absolutely wonderful. Now, there's one animation in here that I want you guys, I want to share with everybody. This is, this is just incredible. It's a couple of minutes long, but he created it in Lightwave, but he used a combination of using Lightwave and then using more modern tools to pull everything together and combine it with audio. And that's also okay in the art contest. I don't mind a bit if you combine something you create on your Amiga with something that you put together with your PC or your Mac or whatever, that's perfectly fine as long as its core is the Amiga, at its soul is the Amiga. So he sent me some pictures of how he created this animation on his Amiga 4000 and he, he went through step by step how he, how he put some stuff together. But I want you guys to see the final product because it is marvelous. Let me get some audio here. A click. Again, done on an Amiga.
I can't do this. This is not in my wheelhouse. Look at that. <laughs> Little pong action. I don't want to spoil the rest of it. I'm going to stop it right here. And you can watch the rest of that on the actual uh, live stream of the Amiga Art Contest. But I think you'll agree, that is pretty darn impress impressive as an animation. Now, I'm not much of an animator myself. I never have been. <clears throat> but I wanted to give, a, give it a shot this year for, my, for myself, for the art contest. And again, I can't win. I'm the judge. Now, some of you, most of you probably know about the Trista Bites show on Twitch. Her name is uh, uh, Bex Trista, and she's a Twitch presenter, and she's a uh, voiceover uh, actor. She did a lot of the voiceover work uh, on the game uh, Iridium that, that uh, Kevin Saunders was also involved with, and she's just a fantastic young lady. So a couple of months ago on, on Twitter, she put up this fun picture of herself morphing into Red Fraggle, okay? because she calls herself a Muppet. That's her joke, is she's, she says she has a Muppet face. I think she's adorable, but she says she has a Muppet face. So I took one look at this image and I thought, you know, we can do something really cool on that, on the Amiga. I can take that and do something 10 times more fun. So I got in touch with her and asked her if I could use these images and create a little something on the Amiga. And she said, sure, Doug. And so I took Morph Plus, which is from uh, the company called Asdig. They made Art Department Professional. And it was one of the first morphing products to morph, you know, this face into that face uh, that was available on any computer platform in the early 90s. And it did an incredible job of morphing things. And it ended up being used in a lot of uh, video productions and uh, movies and things like that. They'd use Morph Plus. Then the company got sold off and it, it, it morphed into a product that's still used today. But I took Morph Plus on the Amiga. This was 100% done on my Amiga 1200. Uh, you, and what I did is I took this first image from, uh, that's of course uh, Bex here, and the last image, Red Fraggle, and created all the morphing to create this little gem right here. <laughs> Look how, it's almost creepy when her mouth and her teeth start vanishing and turn into red fraggle and her hair turns into red's bows on the side of her head and her eyes meld together to become red's eyes. <laughs> Too much fun. Uh, the entire thing took about um, three, four hours to, because on, in, in Morph Plus you have to, you know, okay, here's, Trista's eye and here's Red's eye and you have to put little points between them so the program knows what to change into what. That takes a couple of hours and then it took about uh, four or five hours to render the final images and uh, <laughs> I thought it turned out really fun. So I'm going to do a whole show on Morph Plus and, and probably on that one. That was an Amiga 1200 with a Blizzard 68040 card and 64 megs of RAM. Yep, so a pretty, pretty standard Amiga, but any, any Amiga can, can use it. Anything with a, a couple megs of RAM can handle that just fine. And I think, uh, let me see if I want to tease any more animations here. Oh my goodness, this one's absolutely beautiful. Okay, okay, you guys get to see this one. Ah. <sighs> This animation, uh, done by Adrian uh, Montero, I can't play back on my 6840 Amiga 1200. It's too slow. It, it's only two or three frames per second, um, even on that. And that's okay to use the Amiga to generate the, the animation and then require something else to play it back because that's what we did back in the day, too. We'd create still frames on the Amiga and then one frame at a time, dump those frames to tape and create long animations by dumping them one frame at a time to videotape. This is doing the same thing. It's taking an Amiga, creating the animation, but requiring a different tool to play it back that's, that's more optimized to do it. So let's take a look at this. 
<laughs> Look what he did there. Look at all the reflections. Uh, the Amiga Boing Ball. You can actually see it uh, rolling in the background there. We'll run that one more time. This was a Ham 8 animation. And it will play back on my Amiga, but it doesn't play back that fast. <laughs> so, let's go out of here. And I want to save the rest of the animations because there's a couple more of them that are really, really spectacular. We want to save for the show. Um, the photo category is always fun. And that's taking any kind of photograph, anything that you've, uh, you've taken on your camera, anything you've scanned in with DigiView, bringing it into the Amiga and then doing something with that image. That's, that's actually what I've always done on my Amiga. I'm a horrible at drawing things. Just... I just, it's just not in my wheelhouse. But I love taking photographs, and I love editing them and, and doing fun things with them on the Amiga. So since we're talking about me, I'll just show you one of mine that I've, that I've done here. This was actually outside of my house. This is a HAM 6 image, so 4096 color HAM 6 image. And in the original, you could see the house in the background there. If you look in the lower right-hand corner, you can see the outline of a house. But you could see the house. You could see more details on the tree. But I wanted it to give it more of a shadowed, silhouette-type effect. So I went in, and I, I, in some places, I just bumped up the contrast to bring out more black. In others, I'd actually you know, go in and paint out parts of the house that I didn't want to see. And then I, I uh, increased the contrast a little bit on the sunset to really, really, really bring out the oranges in the sunset. And again, for a ham six image that you could display on your Amiga 1000 with 512K of RAM, I think it's pretty darn fun. And for some reason, the Amiga's always done really, really good with bright oranges and sunset type pictures. They ju it just does a fantastic job. And uh, I think we all know who this guy is good old Amiga Bill, and uh, I was on his stream uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we were talking about the art contest, and he showed a picture that he took of the uh, New York skyline, and he says, oh my goodness, I've got an idea for the art contest, I've got to get to work, <laughs> so he sent this to me a couple of days ago, and he took his photograph that he took of, uh, of the New York skyline, and obviously added his own little Amiga and Amiga Bill flair to it. <laughs> So, Bill's a great guy. If you don't watch his Twitch stream, you really need to. And uh, let's see, we've got, uh, oh, this one's crazy. Uh, my old pal, Royce Hunt. He sent this to me months ago. And, you know, you, you just glance at it and you think, oh, hey, that's a cool picture of a, of a tree. Until you realize that there's zombie flying monkeys in the tree. If you start looking at it, you look at the top of the image, you can actually see it says the word zombie flying monkeys. I don't, I don't think that was in the, uh, the original image, nor do I think the zombie flying monkeys were. But this is the kind of thing we're looking for, and this is the kind of thing that's so, so much fun to do on the Amiga. It doesn't have to be 100% realistic, uh, it just has to be creative and fun. So let's, uh, eh, maybe we'll look at one more. Oh, yes, Jamie Orlando. He's a good pal of mine. And he put on Twitter the other day, he put up an image of, uh, of the moon that he took. And while he was photographing the moon, a plane flew in front of it. And, and it, was a, it was neat, a very realistic picture. And I said, Jamie, you need to do something on your Amiga with that and submit that to the contest. And he says, oh, I'll think about it. And two or three days later, he sent this in. And this is called Opalescent Moon. And if you can see the moon, it looks like it's a, almost like a, a pearl or something. He, he did the, uh, the editing to make the moon look completely different. And uh, I just thought that was an absolutely beautiful, beautiful picture. And I really appreciate him uh, submitting that to the contest. Now, how do we want to spoil any more? Oh, yes. Anthony Jarvis. If you guys don't know Anthony Jarvis, you need to get to know Anthony Jarvis. He does The Amiga Show on YouTube, and it's just The Amiga Show, just look that up. But he does the entire show on the video toaster, start to finish, 
It's a toaster production, so it's in uh, SD resolutions. But he presents it almost like it's an episode of the Computer Chronicles or something, where he's got a, a script. He's like, okay, we're going to talk. About, we're going to review this piece of hardware. We're going to talk about this magazine from this date and time. We're going to look at this piece of software. We're going to look at some images. We're going to review a game. And he has this 25-minute show where he does all this stuff. He'll go through the pages of the magazine, show cool things. He'll review a game. All done on the toaster. All presented on the toaster. And last month, on episode 8, he did a review of the Digiview. And I love my Digiview. And uh, this is timely because uh, Tim was just here. Um, but with my Digiview, I've always used it tradi in the traditional way. Still image, move the little uh, uh, color wheel, capture the images, get a you know, near photographic quality image. What Anthony did is he went to the park and he has a black and white camera, a digital camera that has a black and white mode, and he put it on a tripod and he put the color wheel on there. And he, people were just walking around the park, minding their own business, and you'd turn it to red on the color wheel, takes 30 seconds to digitize, turn it to green, 30 seconds to digitize. In the meantime, people were just going back and forth doing their normal business. So what it did, as you can see on the image, it captured these absolutely ghostly images of people who are walking past and maybe stop for just a few seconds, like there's a dog there and they probably stop for about 10 seconds. And it captures just part of the color of those people before they move on. And yet the tree obviously isn't moving, it captures the whole thing. And these absolutely impressed the daylights out of me and it gave me so many ideas on things that I now want to do with my Digiview, which is kind of the point. I want to motivate people to use their Amigas for something besides video games and really have fun and take advantage of the creative software that's still available today. So, yay to him. Now, a relatively new category is the music category. Um, and these absolutely knock my socks off. Some of these, uh, the, the, the music that's been submitted over the years is just so unbelievably impressive. I mean, the Paula chip is fantastic. Four channel stereo sound from a 1985 machine. But George Albright here had a different idea. He created this, this it's a, a, a music file called Tri Paula, T-R-I Paula. What he did, he took three different Amigas. I think it was an Amiga 500, a 1000, and a 2000. Each of them, he created a um, four-channel music file with, um, um, a mod file. Then he combined them all together with a third-party program in Windows and made a 12-channel mod file by using three different Amigas playing three different parts. So I'm just going to let you listen to a little bit of it. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but we're going we're to go into a, a little bit of it here. One hundred percent Amiga. Again, I don't want to, to spoil the entire song. It's like a six minute uh, long song. But he did such an incredible job of making a 12 channel arrangement by, by letting these three Amigas do their own thing and then combining it together. It just knocks my socks off. Now this is a good friend of ours. This is uh, Polly Alex Bow, And uh, she is in... Um, the United Kingdom, and I want to see if this is the right file here. This is uh, music that she created mostly on the Amiga, a lot of it on the Amiga, but she also does a lot with uh, MIDI work uh, connected to the Amiga, and then she creates videos that implement captures of how she created it on the Amiga. 
Let's see if this is the right one. Again, don't want to spoil it all before the show, but I just wanted to make the point that she's using the Amigas to create uh, a lot of the background music in there. She's using the Amigas to control uh, MIDI on some of her synthesizers, and yet she's using other tools to create the video and, and combine everything together, and that is perfectly fine for the contest. I'm, I'm overjoyed if you just want to use the Amiga for part of your artistic contribution and other tools to bring it all together, it just makes for really, really, really exciting artwork that the Amiga is still part of. So uh, that's just a little taste of 2022 art contest. The actual live stream, usually like two and a half hours long because we go through and we listen to the music, we watch the animations, we laugh, we talk about the artists and what they've done and how they've created it and we just have the greatest time uh, bringing people together um, around the creative aspects of the Amiga. So I'm not sure if there's any questions either from the live audience or online but I'd be happy to answer any if, if anyone has any questions. Nope, I don't see any here. Nothing online? <laughs> That's okay. All right. Well, again, uh, thank you, everybody. Next year, 2023 Amiga Art Can Contest. I'd love it if more people uh, contributed. If you don't feel you're particularly good at creating artwork, that's okay. It's just fun to submit things. It's fun to, to get yourself out there and, and show things off. And we don't judge. Okay, yeah, okay, we do judge because that's what we do. But we don't judge based on the actual quality of the image and the, the stunningness, the amount of colors. A lot of times it's, it's also based on the story behind the art that's created. People send me, some people send me two pages worth of information about what they were feeling when they created it, how they did it, the tools they used, the emotions they felt, and that is as much a part of how we, we, we judge these things as just how pretty the image is. Uh, so I encourage you to, uh, to submit to the art contest next year. Keep an eye on my website, AmigaArtwork.com and Tenmark.com for the release date of the live stream. But again, thank you all very much and uh, enjoy the rest of your time here at Amy West. Thanks.